So in this fourth etude, the idea is to master chord inversions. It is often the case that when you're trying to fill out the harmony, you don't just simply play the same chord over and over, but you kind of go through its inversions up or down like this. Just to you know, hit all those different pitches in every register, basically. And there is a specific technique that comes with going through these inversions and moving your hand confidently. And so in this study, it's less about a specific melody being accompanied and more just about being comfortable in creating this sort of dreamy wash of sound as harmonies change into one another. So in the beginning, we have the first two beats uh, outlining the first position of four notes, which is a C minor harmony. So G, E flat, C, G. And what you'll notice is that instead of notating uh, every chord as what you see in the first beat, three notes on one stem, I decided to notate the second beat as two notes uh, with a shorter duration and the bottom note sustained. And the reason for that is to show the specific technique being used. So when I play this passage, I start in this position, all four fingers ready, with pedal, and then I go to beat two. Of course, the pedal is doing the legato connection for me. But at this point, I'm about to play this chord, the inversion of an A flat major triad, E flat, A, uh, A flat, and C. And you can see that if I anchor the thumb on G and go over it with the long fingers, I can quite comfortably find the necessary notes without having to look down and actually guide the fingers with my eyes. So, one more time. Right. So that will be the first position shift to practice. Stay and put on G and shifting the long fingers over without letting go of G. Right. You're ready to play the third beat and you're freezing to check that you're in position. Now, when you play the third beat, of course, the first thing that does happen is your th first finger flicks out like that. What doesn't happen is the third finger should not lose its bearings. It's on G as well. So maybe doing this move of the thumb in and out, in and out, might be a good idea to, to verify that you have the flexibility that's necessary. There it is. And then you continue to beat four. Very quickly, what happens is with the pedal, which helps you with throughout the study, you have to reach over. Now notice, I'm not letting go of C quite yet. I'm trying to find the B flat with finger two, as well as maybe um, put the fourth finger on D, maybe almost reach F with finger five, very stretched out position. So for a split second, I have this going on. The pedal has this nice dreamy film music like um, aura resonance and I'm about to find my next harmony in the, in the second measure but I'm holding on to the C as my guide because that way I can quite comfortably get to feel at B flat again without having to look down the second finger is quite comfortably reaching the B flat. Now, if you've got a smaller hand, again, I would say as you reach, you will find that the, sec the first finger has to let go of the C. But as long as you're trying to connect, see that legato slur from C to B flat, you will find the B flat 
with the second finger and the other fingers as well. So then you're in this position and of course with five on F, find the octave F below by feel, right? So before you even begin to play measure two, you feel this next position uh, under your fingers. So first beat, second beat, and the exact same thing that happened in measure one occurs. You go over the thumb and you're making sure that those fingers two, three, and five are finding their notes without you having to actually look down and check. And same thing, finger one flicks out, it's on C. Now notice that because I have to play the fifth finger on A flat, it causes all the rest of my fingers to be deeper inside the keys. Now you can experiment slightly with those angles. When you actually play the beat, the last beat of measure two, that would be approximately the position so that once again you flick out, you stretch out your long fingers and you rest the second finger on A flat so as to find the um, A flat, C and E flat. Now my suggestion, even though you can see that mm, I'm naturally placing second, uh, fourth and fifth fingers on A flat, C and E flat, it's not clear to me if that's necessarily the only fingering to use. It's possible to reach with two, three, five. And that might feel better, but that's a bigger stretch. And so I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it out. Make your own choice what feels more comfortable. Either way, you find the position for the first two beats in measure three uh, ahead of time should be able to play these four notes together and then you proceed right so that very important over the thumb position shift that occurs after beat two make sure to master it and then from the a flat with the thumb it's pretty easy to find the first chord of measure four and then you, of course you pull the thumb in and you would move the fifth finger over to a flat for beat two and but the same thing happens you go over the thumb for beat three as soon as you play beat three thumb comes out and then as you play the thumb you get ready for measure five so let's kind of review the whole thing thing that becomes apparent when you play it in succession it's actually not quite what I said you don't really prepare the position for the first two beats of every measure except for the first and the reason is you stretch from the thumb on the fourth beat of those measures and you get ready for that chord higher up your thumb is still down here. Now the pedal is down, so you can definitely let go and get ready ahead of time, which is what I would recommend in practice. But in performance, what you'll probably find yourself doing is you're holding the, the note with the thumb, you're playing the chord on the downbeat with fingers two, four, five, two, three, five, whatever, and then you pull the thumb in right away. So, if you practice doing this, actually moving and not playing, you will have a very solid um, sensation of this position or, or this position or whichever position for the first two beats of every measure. But in performance, you will find yourself more like
like this. Each beat has its own slight adjustment of position. All right, going on to measure five. Now we're going up instead of going down. Here, there are two ways to reposition for beats two and three. You either pull the thumb underneath to find the D and then flick the rest of the fingers out. So it's a kind of two-step transition. You first make sure you found the D with the thumb and then you spread out again everything by feel you don't need to look down for that octave based full chord of course as you become more comfortable you don't need to put the thumb underneath you do something like this you've got the beat one chord down and then you just move and the reason you can probably learn to do that is because the fifth finger communicates to your brain where D is. So here I missed, and I know I missed instantly because my first finger didn't land anywhere close to where my fifth finger was. So you can even practice doing it this way. Hold the chord and then just move and recognize, yep, I'm not here, let me do it again. There it is. These instantaneous position shifts are, of course, better for piano music. The, the better you can master these position shifts, the more confident your playing will become. But as a kind of training wheels idea, you can do it in these two steps. I would still make sure that I prepare beats two and three before I play beat two. So it's, it's become something like this. You're holding beat one and then you're finding the D, flicking out, and then you go on to beat two, three, same thing happens here. Prepare beats four and the downbeat of the next measure. This uh, measure six should feel relatively straightforward. One more time, measure five. Again, downbeat. Right? And then eventually, I think, if you do this two-step position shift, you can probably just go for this and just do it. Do those two steps very quickly together. Right? It's because the idea is to feel comfortable with this next position. And then, of course, this position. The finger four there. Again, as I described, I think in, for Etude 3, you're using that second finger pivot around the E flat to find the final beat of measure 6, and then slide right into the position for measure 7. And we're back into this down, downward cascade of inverted chords and you use the bottom note to find your next inversion. And then reaching up for measure eight and in instantly finding all four notes. Now here in measure eight, you, know, you can notice that there are basically two four note chord positions. The first two beats, last two beats. But the transition between them can also be a two-step procedure. You get to beat two and then first you pull in the long fingers followed quickly by the extension of the thumb. And again do that before you go into beat three. And then there would be the return to measure one. So this is ideal, right? Going immediately to the new position and if you can do it great but if you feel there is something lacking in confidence do it in two parts get to beat two and then instantly do this and this beat two followed by first part second part and then you go back to the beginning uh, when you go to the second time bar so, in this case, measure 9. 
you instead of going to measure five chord, you go to G flat major. But the same idea occurs. You shift to the new position for beats two and three. And then you have to do a very quick position shift. What I find makes it quite easy is the fact that the shape under your fingers is identical. It's simply shifted up an octave. So you should use that feeling as a guide. One more time. Beat one of measure nine and then find beat two and three before you play it. Then beat two. See, I know instantly without looking down that I I did not land in the right position. So one more one more time, freeze on beat three and go for it. You'll instantly find, yep, that was wrong as well. One more time, beat three. Now, do it in two parts, right? You can try this two-part idea. Bring the first finger underneath to where fifth finger is and then extend the rest of the hand. And then continue to play in the end of beat three and then beat four. And then you adjust for measure 10 there. One more time. Right, so that should be the feel of this measure. And then eventually, if you do it deliberately and without any rush through it, just specific steps, you will find yourself become more and more and more, and more confident to where you can just do it. You can just leap to the right position right away. In measure 10, more of the same type of material as we saw in measure one and so on. Uh, then again, in measure 11, we have new chord, but the exact same thing as in measure nine, rising up, find the position, find that top position before you play it, and then B flat major chord on, on uh, measure 12. And the same thing going over the thumb as you go down. Now in measure 13, I would say this is pretty much identical in terms of the type of uh, technical problems uh, as in measure one. The only difference is now you're kind of playing on the black keys. Scratching on top of the black keys, but same principle. Find the C by feel. When you stretch from the last beat of measure 13, find the C with finger two, find the E flat with finger three, and the fifth finger is kind of reaching as far as it can. And then readjust. So practice that readjustment of position for beats one and two before you play them. Right, so measure 14, beats one and two. And then find beat three before you play it and then flick the thumb out. Now I don't recommend holding on to th the, th the three notes of uh, B3 of measure 14. No need to do it. As soon as you play them, pivot around the E flat with on the second finger to find the A flat with the thumb. Don't go too far. There's no need to do that. Just enough to find the tip of this note. So. Measure 15 is basically under your fingers. E flat minor harmony. Now A fl fl E flat minor, now A flat minor in measure 16. Right, A flat triad. Now here, not sure what fingers you would prefer. Probably three five for that third beat of measure 16. And again, as soon as you play, Flick the thumb down to find F sharp. Again, I'm sitting pretty far down. You can see my nose just barely. I would go even further. Now I'm right across from F. And that makes playing the F sharp with finger one quite easy. And then measure 17. 
we try to return back home so we go like this thumb under to find the G and then find the rest of the G major chord for beat 4 keep shifting the 2nd and 3rd finger to find the next chord keep doing it now you're having to do that famous slide diagonal slide inside the keyboard after beat 4 of measure 18 to prepare for beats 1 and 2 of 19 keep reaching and shifting now that's a little bit uncomfortable I guess if you can stay with the thumb on this black white borderline if it feels very uncomfortable for your hand, maybe it's a little smaller and playing that fifth finger diagonally, trying to hit the F cleanly is hard, well, then of course do this. Back out, and then back in. But if you can stay in, if your hand is large enough, you get to measure 20, stay inside the keyboard, makes it much easier to get to the last two beats of that measure before DC Alcoda. And of course, I would recommend highly practicing positions as blocks. So starting in measure, uh, well, let's start at measure 17. First two beats, then find the next beat, three and four. Play that block, measure 18, next, measure 19, keep going going maybe stay inside maybe do this and back inside here make sure those blocks feel comfortable you go back then finally um, let's see how does this work at the coda sign we jump from here we're holding the F and we're about to go to the coda there it is stretch the long fingers out to C E G go for it pull the thumb in a little bit same thing as before you go over the thumb to find the next inversion of this chord pivot on the second finger to find the G below now shift your position this chord continues rising up the octaves same thing try to not look down try to find it by feel so beats 4 of measure 22 and beat 1 of measure 23 that's a single position just for beats 2 and 3 of uh, measure 23 beats 4 of measure 23 and 1 of measure 24 Right, and there is the last note all the way down. This C, of course, you can find with your eyes, not a problem. All right, well, do enjoy this one. Um, there is the performance to refer back to. Definitely less about melody and more about harmonic atmosphere. <laughs>